Good morning, fourth grade, good morning. It is a terrific Tuesday, so let's get started on our secret codes. Can you figure out the code on this slide? All right, so for your number detective today, the secret number has two digits, so it's a little baby number. Both digits are less than eight. The first digit is zero, three, or six. The second digit is also zero, three, or six. Hmm. Count by threes. Three, six, nine. Those numbers are called multiples, the numbers we say when we skip count. Great job. The twelfth number you count is the secret number. Hmm. What in the world could the secret number be? So, pop quiz, if I can get to this number by counting by threes, that means this number is hmm by three divisible by three. That's right. Okay, good luck finding the mystery number. On the other side, you are trying to figure out why the cookie went to the doctor. All right, so you add these up to find the sums. Don't forget to borrow when you need to. For example, on that first one on E, you're gonna look at seven plus three in the ones place, which is 10. So the zero stays put, the one pops up there. This is review. It's always good to go back and review, especially some of those addition skills when we get to looking at decimals and making change and money. So we want you to review some of these addition skills and we want to see how quickly you can go while still getting the correct answer. So sometimes we're so focused on multiplication and division that we are really fast with those. And then when we see like nine plus three, we have to stop and think for a minute. So we wanna see how quickly you can go through these addition problems while still getting the correct answer. Remember, if the correct answer is not at the bottom of this riddle, you got to recheck. Okay, good luck. And before you send in your clue, make sure that you show your work to your teacher. For today, I have a special surprise for you. You are going to get a bonus reading today, and I'm going to read to you. So, this story is called, actually it's not a story, it's an article from our Scholastic Learn at Home website, and this is one of the articles that was on um, today's reading. So I'm going to read it to you. To get to this version, I clicked on Presentation View, which you can do also on your screen if you go to Scholastic Learn at Home, and I'm going to read it to you today. So sit back, relax, and follow along with me on the screen. The History of Yum, How Chocolate Became America's Favorite Candy. So already I'm reading that title and I'm thinking, okay, this is probably going to be nonfiction. And if it's nonfiction, it's going to be true facts. And the author's purpose is going to be in form. You're going to learn today. Remember all of those author's purposes? We have persuade, come on, man, in form. You're going to learn today and entertain. Let me tell you a story. If it's nonfiction, it's going to be in form and they're gonna teach us true facts. I think that this is in form because it says the history, and history is usually a nonfiction word, of yum. I'm also noticing over here that there's a photograph of someone named Milton Hershey, according to the caption. And that looks like it's got a real photograph, which is another sign of nonfiction. Let's keep going. Think and read, compare and contrast. As you read both articles, think about how chocolate has changed over time. Hmm, okay, it's giving me a purpose for reading. I'm gonna compare and find the similarities and contrast and find the differences. All right, let's get started. It all started with a smell, sweet and delicious. The year was 1893. A man named Milton Hershey was in Chicago. He was a candy maker from Pennsylvania. He had come to Chicago to visit a huge fair. People from many countries had come to see inven inventions from all over the world. Er, pause. I think that my prediction about it being nonfiction is correct because I saw a date, 1893. I see some names and I see some real places. Let's keep going. The next subheading says a new kind of treat. That gives me an idea what the main idea of that next chunk is going to be. 
From the moment Hershey entered the exhibition hall, he noticed a great smell that filled the air. Pause. I see exhibition right here, a public show. That helps me know what those words mean. So keep an eye out for those bold words. What was it? Hershey searched and searched. He walked around sniffing the air. <laughs> Finally, he found the source of the yummy aroma. Pause. That means smell, according to these bold words. Two men had a special machine. It was making something that few Americans had ever tasted, chocolate. Today, chocolate is everywhere. You can munch on chocolate bars, slurp up hot chocolate, and gobble many different kinds of chocolate treats. But back in 1893, Chocolate was almost unknown in America. If you were a kid in those days, you would have had many candies to choose from. Some favorites were peppermints, lemon drops, and jelly beans. Let's look at that photograph and caption. You can thank Milton Hershey for bringing chocolate to America. When I read nonfiction, nonfiction is one of my favorite things to read because you learn so many true facts. Fiction is a story. And remember, we talked about how we don't think of fiction as fake anymore. We think of fiction as a story, S-T-O-R-Y, story. This does not have a character or a setting. Remember, story stands for S, setting, the when and the where. T stands for talking characters. O, oops, a problem, resolution how you solve the problem, and why, yes, a solution. This is not an example of a story because I don't really have a setting and talking characters and a problem. It's not set up like a movie or a play. This is nonfiction because it's teaching me true facts. Can you imagine a world where you hadn't tasted chocolate? That's crazy, but it is telling me about some true facts that happened in 1893. When I read nonfiction like this, I like to take breaks after the paragraphs and see how many things I can remember. It's like a game. So for example, if I pause right here, I would think he was at an expedition. His name, his last name was Milton. In 1893, people had not tasted chocolate. He was sniffing the air. I came up with four things. Then I can read it again and see how many things I can remember. So that's a great reading strategy to try. Let's keep going. You wouldn't have been able to buy chocolate, though. It was mainly sold in Europe. American candy makers hadn't figured out how to make chocolate. Secret recipe. Milton Hershey wanted very much to become the first American chocolate maker. He bought that machine from the fair. He brought it back to his candy factory. Soon, his company was making chocolate, but Hershey wasn't satisfied. Let's look. That means feeling pleased. Hershey wasn't feeling pleased. Yes, his chocolates were tasty, but it was a dark and bitter kind of chocolate. Hershey wanted to make milk chocolate, which was sweeter and creamier. He just had to figure out how to make it. His team worked for months. They made a lot of mistakes, but finally they succeeded. They came up with the perfect recipe, the famous factory. So I know this next section is all going to be about the famous factory. Hershey built a new factory in Pennsylvania. He also built a town for his workers. He called the town Hershey. By 1915, Hershey's chocolate bars were one of the best-selling candies in the nation. Milton Hershey died in 1945, but his company lives on. In fact, you can visit his factory and take a tour. If you go there, be sure to sniff the air. It smells sweet and chocolatey. It is the same delicious scent that inspired Milton Hershey more than a century ago. Let's check out these photographs. Look at the top at this Hershey sweet milk chocolate. The caption says, check out what the first Hershey bar cost. If you look in that tiny white print, you can see it says five and 10 cents. Can you imagine buying a Hershey chocolate bar for a nickel? At the bottom, it says the town of Hershey is famous for its factory and theme park. So that's somewhere you can go visit today. All right, we read two separate sections. We read two little um, sections and I can tell there's two because they're separated by subheadings. So I can think about all the things I can remember about the secret recipe and all the things I can remember about the famous factory. I like to close my eyes when I do, when I do it. You can, close, you can close yours or keep yours open. So let's think for a second. How many things can you remember about the secret recipe? I remembered three things. How many did you remember? Three things is kind of 
you know, kind of okay, but I think I can do better. So what I would do if I was reading this on my own is read it again, close my eyes and see if I could beat my score of three. And I would do the same thing for the famous factory. That just helps me remember. Let's look at this next article covered in orange, bordered in orange, that's entitled When Chocolate Tasted Yucky. The subtitle says, thousands of years ago, chocolate wasn't so delicious, but many believed it had special powers. I think chocolate has special powers sometimes. The seed of a cacao tree, cacao tree excuse me, plus chili pepper plus honey equals gross. The first people to taste chocolate lived about 3,000 years ago. Their home was a rainforest in Central America. They discovered that they could eat the seeds of a cacao tree. They roasted the seeds, then ground them up in a chocolatey powder. Next, they mixed the powder with chilies and a drop of honey. This drink tasted like spicy dirt. If you were to have taken a sip, you would have spit it right out. So why did anyone drink it? People believe that drinking chocolate made them smarter and stronger. Centuries went by. Pause. Do you remember how many year how many years are in a century? We did that on our secret math the other day. A hundred years. So if it's centuries, that tells me it's multiple hundreds of years. More people discovered chocolate, but it was so expensive that only the richest people got to eat it. It wasn't until the 1800s that chocolate makers learned how to make it taste good. Today, chocolate is popular around the world, and the truth is, some kinds of chocolate really can be healthy. Dark chocolate has nutrients, items that help people, plants, and animals grow, and may be good for your brain and heart. It turns out that those ancient chocolate makers were right, and ancient means from a long time ago. Think and write. What was chocolate like when it was a drink long ago? What was it like when Milton Hershey made it? Answer in a paragraph, including details from both articles. If you choose to do that writing assignment today, boys and girls, I have some house points for you. You can also compare and contrast chocolate today to chocolate in these articles, or you can compare the first article and the second article. Comparing and contrasting means to find the similarities and the differences. So you can make a Venn diagram, which means you take two circles and overlap them, and the things that are the same about those two items go right in the middle of those overlaps, or you can make a list, similarities and differences. You can also make a T-chart where you have article one, article two, and then a column in the middle that is for both of them. Sometimes if you're drawing a Venn diagram, you might want to use a plate or something circle to trace your circles. You can also write your items and then draw the circles. I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks for reading with me. And if you read this with me, let me know on Google Classroom. Love you guys. Have a great day.